Janine, I think one of the topics you want to speak to us about uh, as it pertains to contemporary issues is the use of bioweapons. Uh, you appear to have some very interesting information and research on that very topic. Can you perhaps give us a broad overview of what your research has revealed and then go into a bit more detail just to inform the listeners and viewers? Mm, for sure. So what's triggered me uh, and my interest in saying something about this is the fact that Natural News Today has come out and mentioned Plum Island um, bioweapon um, laboratory and the use of ticks as vectors to distribute various bioweapons. Now I happen to know quite a bit about this and so that's the reason why I'm happy to um, and I feel that I should say something. Um, probably the best place to start is, is to share my story and that is that I became after beginning my research and writing about these things for World Watch for many years I became suddenly very very sick and there was no clear diagnosis went from doctor to doctor for years and years and finally I found a really fantastic dietitian and he did a lot of blood tests and sent me off for a lot of um, uh, further testing and recommended me to some really brilliant doctors who finally did give me some labels um, like fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue and uh, multiple chemical and food sensitivity and there was this great big long list of diagnoses restless leg syndrome sleep apnea now I'm mentioning these multiple sclerosis I'm mentioning these diagnoses because it's going to become interesting and apparent why that's very significant. So as I accumulated one diagnosis after another, it seemed like I was a hypochondriac, but I had the proof, you know, I had all the evidence with the diagnosis from the doctors. And um, eventually um, one doctor who'd been seeing me for many years he um, made a clinical diagnosis of Lyme disease chronic late-stage Lyme disease well this is close to you know as close to a death sentence as you could get and um, so I felt very desperate and when when did that occur when did that diagnosis occur yeah that was around about 2013 2014 so, so almost 10 years ago yeah and at the time you must have been worried this could be curtains so to speak oh yes absolutely I was got you know off to emergency every week or so and in emergency they didn't know how to treat me and yeah so I was really suffering and really struggling and going unconscious all the time and I was very very unwell mm. interesting it raises the question what what was the trigger that that brought this on there, yeah. there, there are you saying there was no explanation at all as to how this occurred or yes you came into contact with some virus or look I don't I don't have a definitive answer um, you know obviously I'm sharing some really personal private information here but this is hopefully for everybody's benefit um, to think where to start um, I think it began um, when the rheumatologist noted that my fibromyalgia was post-traumatic fibromyalgia um, that's really the only indication I've got as to what might have been the trigger for it um, we found that there's a history of veterans coming back from um, work overseas and they will develop fibromyalgia and it will be considered as part of PTSD a PTSD um, reaction but what we've since learned um, is that it's likely that people the population have actually been infected with a bioweapon which is Lyme disease and 
the research on that leads all the way back to this same place that Natural News are mentioning today, Plum Island Secret Bioweapon Laboratory in America and it was just across the water from this secret island is Lyme, Connecticut where this strange illness broke out um, that has since been labelled Lyme disease and it's believed that uh, from the people who've done research in a book called Lab 257 that it's actually uh, there were ticks that were being used as vectors to release this bioweapon and um, that's where it started to become interesting for me because my mother grew up on a dairy farm and they used to drink milk um, fresh from the cow butter freshly churned uh, cream you know straight off the top of the milk without any um, treatment of the milk it wasn't heated it wasn't treated in any way and we know that there's TV uh, footage uh, there are uh, there is evidence that a Lyme like illness has been found here in Australia and it was very prevalent and we know that there were many ticks on the cows and so that um, goes into the milk um, it's not um, pasteurized or homogenized and it's you know gone throughout the entire family and so a whole family have got these um, these symptoms and some of them are a lot worse now I went through a period of extreme trauma um, and I went through many court cases and that was very traumatic for me and it's very likely that that's what triggered it but um, I'm just wanting to highlight this because there are people out there such as Lindsay Williams who is a chaplain for the elite who says that the elite have told him that they're not worried about the population rising up because when they become traumatized from um, significant events civil war or whatever they will become unwell and not be able to um, they won't have the strength to carry out you know the kind of revolution or rebellion that they might have in mind so I wanted to address this and talk a little bit about what I have found is helpful if people are suffering with conditions like these um, to look into Lyme as a possible cause and going alkaline with your diet so live energized is a fantastic diet program it's a life it's a health coaching program it's really fantastic and it helps you to keep your body alkaline so that bacteria, viruses and fungi won't live in your body and it's a constant challenge but it is doable um, also there's a protocol a special protocol for Lyme disease and that is the Buna protocol for Lyme and that is um, a herbal program so you get the book you read up on it and you diagnose and you treat yourself and you choose what herbs will treat what symptoms that you need and um, so I hope that's of some help for some people what I did find is that MS patients the autopsies that have been done on them had that the white lesions in the brain are actually the Borrelia burgdorferi, the Lyme spirochetes that have all grouped together in the brain. Um, now I actually had white lesions on my brain after doing the Lyme protocol that my doctor put me on which involved oregano oil and clay and charcoal um, when I went back to see the neurologist and I had a scan of my brain done he said your brain is 10 times better than someone um, your 10 sorry your brain is better than somebody 10 years younger than you and he sat me down and wanted to know what I'd done um, so the oregano oil worked brilliantly for killing the lime um, but it's a pretty harrowing protocol um, another um, treatment that I found very helpful was 98 Alive which is an alternative antibiotic that has been developed from tea tree oil so I just thought I'd mention those things for people and if um, people are interested I can address this in more detail 
at some point in the future but the um, I should just mention as well that Lyme disease just happens to be um, reactive to electromagnetic frequencies in fact it grows um, 10 times exponentially um, when exposed to um, electromagnetic frequencies so this could explain part of what's going on with the autism um, epidemic which is what it's been labelled as by autism specialists. They're referring to it as an epidemic and it's on the J-curve. It's on an exponential J-curve. Um, soon it will be down to, I think in Japan there's already 20 people, um, one in 20, sorry, uh, child has been diagnosed with autism. So with autism there is this same um, reactivity to electromagnetic frequencies and Dr. Klinghart who happens to be an autism specialist says that he can predict what mother will develop a child with autism and he says um, it will be dependent on how close she is to electromagnetic frequencies Wi-Fi or smart meters or whatever so I know I've dumped a whole lot of information there without a lot of explanation but we can always come back to it but hopefully it might put some pieces of a very interesting puzzle together. By the way one more point I want to finish on and that is why did Dr Karen Phelps, actually Professor Karen Phelps who was the former head of the Australian Medical Association, why did she say in the 2015 Women's Weekly after she was no longer the um, professor, uh, sorry, the head of the Australian Medical Association. Why did she say that there's a cover-up over Lyme in Australia?